Hi guys, welcome to my another video. This time we're going back to the housing market. So with housing market burst in 2017, so I have a video, my first video actually is about the housing market. Three signals will the housing market bubble burst. So that video, I see some of the comments are pretty rude. I see one of the comments saying that, oh, thank you very much for the outdated chart. I know that's not really updated, but I was trying to say there are three signals that we should be aware of if, in terms of analyzing the housing market. So whether we are going to buy our first house or we have bought our first house, it's our second, or we want to sell our house, we really have to understand the direction of the general market because the direction will only be one way, okay? It will not happen in separate ways. Like if you haven't bought a house and the housing market will drop, for those who have a house already, the housing market will go up, right? That's not gonna happen. So bear with me, whether or not you have the money or you don't have the money or you really have the money or you have really many, many, many houses, that really doesn't matter, right? It's all about the math and statistics. So in case you haven't watched my previous video, you can go to the link below that you can refer to my first video that many people have left me comments and I've replied each of them already. So you can look at the three signals, but now let me review what are those three signals and we'll update a really updated version of 2017 of the American housing market. Canada, Australian, or maybe even the UK, okay? So that's it. So first of all, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, hopefully you can subscribe to my YouTube channel and also my Facebook page, you can like the page. And then for the, and you, you can click, also click the bell notification button. So whenever I have uh, my latest video, you, um, you make sure that you're one of the first one to look at my latest video. So I'll be talking about housing market, investment, stocks, commodities, and conspiracy theories, anything that will have to do with a longer term and stable calculated investment. I would do that, okay? So if you have any comment, you can leave, uh, leave me a comment like, like below. If you like, like this video, please give me a like and share this video. So the first ratio that really have to find out that usually when the bubble bursts, usually under all previous cycles, we usually see all these three signals all lit up. So what does it mean? So each signal represents some kind of danger in the housing market. So we really need three of them, all of the signals lit up in order to say the bubble is going to burst. So let us go through the signals. Without further say, let's dig in. So the first signal is dwelling price to income ratios. That means housing price to income ratio. This is a ratio saying that if you don't drink, don't eat, you don't spend all of your money, all of your income, put all it back for the housing market. So for the average, how many years you can buy an average house, okay? So usually it's between three to six, okay? So the higher, the worse. The second ratio is household debt to income ratio, or I will specific look at the mortgage debt to income ratio. In this case, this is US. The US in the 2007 subprime mortgage, usually people will think of the bear market as uh, the Lehman crisis. Lehman crisis, that's the bear market. That's not the recession, that's not the reason. The reason is the subprime mortgage. The Lehman Brothers, the AIA, stuff like that, they are all victims, okay? So at that level, the debt ratio is 125. The mortgage debt is 96. So with the $400 that I earn, $96 is for mortgage. That's pretty crazy, right? So in terms of all of that, it's 125. So basically, it's more than what you earn. So basically, you know, the, end of day is coming. So now 2014 is 99 and 70. Wait a minute, I have updated version. The last one is mortgage cost to rent ratio. If that is true, you will see the ratio hitting one. That means really good for the housing market. That means if you pay for the mortgage and buy the house versus renting is at the same price. If they are all the same price, will you rent a house or buy a house? Of course, you rent a house, so usually it's more than one, like 150, like 1.5, or you can rent 150%, or it can go up to 200%. If it go up to 300 to 400%, just like 1997 in the Eastern housing markets, or to the 200 to 300 range in the subprime mortgage period, so that is pretty crazy. So this is basically the three signals. So for the first signal, in case for the people who say thank you for the outdated data, now I'll give you a website. There's noombo.com property. Just copy down the link. If you have the link, it has the global map 
whenever, whatever, whichever country you want to look for, you just click it. So you can click on the Toronto, it means it says 8.5. That's the most updated figure that you can find. 8.5, that means every job, every person not spending any money, it would take 8.5 years for you to buy the average house. If you're not buying a heavy house, that's not 8.5. If you want to live in Markham, Richmond Hill, and 7,000 square foot with a big swimming pool, that's another story, right? So if you are able to save up half of your money to buy a house, it's really good, right? That means it will take you 17 years already, okay? So Vancouver is 13.12 years. Pretty crazy, right? San Francisco, 12.11. New York, Brooklyn, 13.64. So if you think that's bad, Hong Kong, 36, Beijing, 33, that's quite crazy, right? So there are kind of two reasons I can think of this theory. It's not that it was going to burst. I don't think it's going to burst because if it is going to burst or not, it depends on the interest rate cycle, which you can refer to my previous video. But it's now showing that which country is having kind of a bubble and which country is kind of expensive. And now you have to know the reasons, okay? So. For example, Hong Kong. Hong Kong is surrounded with the sea, right? You can really move further and further because end up you will end up living inside, literally inside the sea. So if you live to Hong Kong, you're not living in Hong Kong, right? So Hong Kong is a really special area that people love to live in for whatever reason, for business or cultural whatever reason. So it deserves a higher valuation in some way, right? So starting from 70s or 1980s, right? Hong Kong's price to income ratio is always higher than average world ratio. So that's kind of explain how the situation in Hong Kong. So how can you explain the Vancouver and Toronto and US, right? So it can be explained sort of the ISIS issue. So if you have money, if you want to immigrate or you have to choose a country to leave, it's sort of not the first option. It's not, not like UK and France because it's within like walking distance for them to do some terrorist attack. So the kind of countries is Australia or maybe North America. So for North America, there's US and Canada, right? So majority of the people will think it's Canada. Honestly, people around the world will kind of mainly financially, they really don't want to accept Americans, right? Because the taxation, the forms, and it's really troublesome. So people will tend to go to Canada and for Canada, if you really want to find a place for an average human to live, that's Vancouver, right? Vancouver is kind of more normal, right? Toronto is pretty cold. And in summer, I tried one time, it's 50 degrees Celsius. Celsius, okay? That's not Fahrenheit, Celsius, okay? It's pretty crazy. So that's why Vancouver is more expensive than Toronto. So this doesn't mean that it's the chance for you to buy a house. I'm not saying that is that if you want to buy your first house because you really don't want to spend all your money renting a house, so that you kind of explain why Vancouver is more expensive. It's not just, oh, around the world, I'll choose the least expensive. Well, maybe you can find a lot that many of those with darker green area like South Africa, Yellow Life, lots and lots, many places, it's five years, right? And Australia, like Perth, it's pretty cheap, right? So. It's, it doesn't work this way. It's how you should explain, or is there any explainable way for that city to own a such high or low valuation? That's it. So the second ratio is the housing debt to income ratio. So as I said, 100 is pretty crazy. So now, updated version, United States, 79.2. Oh, pretty good, pretty good. So we have learned a lesson after the subprime mortgage, right? So the other country, UK, Canada, Australia, as I said, Australia, Canada, for now, is the best options to immigrate to, at least for the Chinese. So 150 to 122% is pretty, pretty bad. So that's the mortgage income already because I've only been looking at the mortgage debt ratio. So that's pretty crazy. So in terms of Hong Kong, it's now 72%. In terms of Malaysia and Singapore, it's like 60 to 70%. So seems like the 1997 housing crisis 
which happened only in the Eastern market, we really learned the lesson 20 years ago. So 10 years ago is US and other UK and Canada, right? Canada is not as bad. So now seems like United States people in America will really learn the lesson, but not really for the Australian and Canada market because Canadian and Australian housing market really we can say in 2008 they really have even adjusted a little bit right so i'm not sure maybe the bubble is coming into canada and australia but i will make a conclusion in the end so you see for the second ratio signal is the east side is kind of better than the rest west side okay so the third ratio is the mortgage cost to rental ratio so as you see in the latest figure you can see in the 2008 and the SARS period, the ratio really kind of hit one, one to one, right? So it's not really a signal for measuring bubbles. It's really a signal measuring when we should kick into the housing market. Because in the SARS period and in the subprime mortgage recession, right? We're really overwhelmed by all the pessimistic emotions around us, okay? So even though the housing market dropped by a lot, okay? but now with that this ratio meaning that if i rent a house or i buy the house the cost is the same should you buy a house or rent a house of course you buy the house so now looking back for the past previous two recession that really we have the statistics and data to prove ourselves or tell ourselves that we should kick into the housing market so of course if it's 150 or 200 it's really not a big deal but in case it's going up to 200 or 300, even 400%, that's really crazy. So the last thing, when will the bubble burst? So there are some kind of cities that are having bubbles, a little bit of bubbles, some they don't have bubbles. So first of all, let me say that whenever the bubble will burst, the bubble has to exist, the bubble, okay? For the bubbles to exist for the previous three to four recessions, these three signals that I just shared to you guys will all have to lit up in order to be confirmed historically that all of the signals would lit up in order to prove the bubble would actually exist. So if it is going to burst, it's about the interest rate cycle versus the housing market. So for that, I will leave it to you to look at my previous video about the housing market versus the interest cycle. So now the conclusion is that the housing market, whether or not you have bought a house or not, have 10 houses or 100, the housing market will tend to go up, kind of like 10 to 30% more. And then it will have a schedule to come back down, that's a recession, to around this level or maybe lower. So this time of period is around, maybe I'm guessing the period according to the interest rate frequencies and periods of all previous interest rate cycles, interest rate heights is around three to five years. So you have this time period to save the money, or if you don't want to take the chance to rent a house uh, for this long, you can buy a house now, or at least you're not selling your first house, okay, please. Okay, that's really the signal that I want to, something that I want to share today with you guys. So hopefully this, all of the data, are really updated to now, okay? So please leave me a comment about all your living. Some of, most of you are really lovable and are really encouraging. So I love seeing your messages. So please leave a message. I'll talk to you guys more in the comments below. And please smash the like button, give me some love and share the video to your friends. So hopefully we can really grow the channel. Hopefully we can break a thousand. That's my short term goal, okay? So thank you for your support. So I will have more of, and more of this kind of video. So, Tell me what kind of videos or what kind of stuff I can record and share to you guys because in the Asia market, I have all the 300 episodes of the investment education playlist, okay? That's really a big volume in terms of all around the world because I really used to have a lot, a lot of time to do that. Lastly, when I was taking this data, I will found that it's really, really hard to find all this data, okay? That means good news for us. That means not too many people are aware of these three signals. So we may be able to leave the housing market earlier or we can later on buy a housing market when it drop, when it comes to a recession, we can kick into the housing market earlier and sharper, okay? So 
we have to really put an eye on each other and we have to show support to each other because there are more news or something that happened that maybe I actually don't know. But anything I have, any research that I did, I will share you just like we need a person that speaks English for people who are English speaking to know the same thing, which is the investment. Investment, investing is a global thing. At least this is what I think. So with that being said, have a good day. Hopefully you can have a best strategy for you and your family and for your loved ones. See you next time. Goodbye.